Okay, now that you can create variables and you know how uh, uh, different data types work, let's take it to the next step and cover basic mathematical operations. So, uh, programming is a little bit different from what we use in our calculator. Not every uh, uh, key on the calculator is available as text on a, on a computer on a keyboard. So we have to use some uh, creativity sometimes to imply what we mean. So we have the traditional four, plus, minus, multiply, divide. Double uh, multiply here actually means exponent in Python. That's not the way it works with every programming language. It's somewhat common. It's, Python's not the only one that does that. But the percent sign means something unique. It's called modulation. So it takes the remainder of the first number uh, divided by the second. So let me show you exactly what I mean there. Um, so here we've got six variables being created. A, if we say A equals 2 plus 2, it's going to store 4. All right, B, uh, I've got two floats. It's going to store a float. 8, two integers multiplied. D, notice I've got a float divided by an integer. It's going to convert the integer, the, re the answer, to a float. It's not going to round 3.6 up and then do a divide. It's going to uh, convert the, the integer to the larger data type of float. Here, 2 uh, exponent 3 is 8. That means 2 times 2 times 2. And then finally, how does modulation work? 10 percent sine 3 is going to give you 1, because 3 divided by 10 goes in 3 times with a remainder of 1. So it's basically giving you the remainder uh, left over. It doesn't matter how many times 3 goes into 10. It's just going to give you the remainder that's left. So you might wonder, well, why do we need that? It's actually pretty common, or, well, relatively common in programming. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and create something new. Uh, and let's make this video. I'm going to cover the next two sections here, 2.3 and 2.4. So let's go move that out of the way. Let's make a new Python 3 notebook. And we'll call this one... Chapter 2.3 and 2.4. All right. So let's uh, let's try some of this out. Let's first of all let's create those um, those same things we had before. Those, some of those same variables. Oh no, we'll make some new ones. Radius equals two. Then let's come up with pi. We know 3.14, and then area is going to equal pi times the radius. What's the formula? Well, radius squared. Pi r squared is area. So what I've done here is I've said that area equals pi times r squared. That means raised to the power of 2. So let's print this out and see what we get. Print area. All right. If the radius is 2, that means that our area is 12.56. Notice it gave us a float back. It didn't try to round up because what I've got here is an integer, here's a float, and here's a hard-coded integer. So whenever I have integers and floats in the same formula, it's not going to lose data by rounding up. It's going to err on the side of creating a larger variable by uh, casting the radius into a float. So I, I, I can't, um, the compiler can't use two different data types together in the same uh, formula. But if it does, and when I say can't, clearly I just did it, but it does some automatic casting or converting behind the scenes for us. It converted radius to a float and this to a float. I mean, all I have to do to convert it to a float is just imply that this is 2.0. All right, let's, uh, let's play with some... Um, operators, or sorry, some parentheses, just to make sure that we get how these things work too. Um, just like all mathematical operators, parentheses are important. So if we say a equals 2 times 1 plus 3, then we print a, we get 5. Uh, that's because 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3, that's 5. But what if what we really meant was 2 times 1 plus 3? That's different. In that case, the 1 plus 3 then gets done first, making it 4, and it's 2 times 4 is 8. So uh, just know that the, the mathematical order of operations you learned back in algebra is consistent or is kept here in programming. All right. 
that's good for mathematical operations. Let's talk about data type casting. So often we'll have a need to explicitly change the type of a variable uh, from when we first create the variable to later when we use it. Now, why would that happen? Well, often a variable will be created by pulling data in from some outside source uh, in the data science context. So say this number three actually came from a database somewhere else. And we'll learn how to do that later on the semester. Uh, well, from the database, it came as a three, but we really wanted it, that three to be a string. So let me start typing this out and give you some examples here. So down here in this code, let's make a number. And let's say that number is three. Um, now, let's say number equals, and here's how we're going to convert that three into a string. We use the keyword str and number. So what's happening here? Now remember from a couple of video, videos ago, when you declare a variable, give it a value, and then you declare that same variable again, it's going to overwrite this variable. But it won't happen until this line is finished. So what I can do is I can say number equals, so whatever's on the left is always changed to be whatever's on the right. I don't know if you picked up on that by now, but here area is changed to this information on the right hand side. And then that's what's printed out here. We don't, we don't, for example, say that um, three equals number. Let me, uh, let me back up a second. So if I try and say three equals number, it's gonna give me an error. It's gonna be like, wait a minute, three, you, it's thinking that I'm trying to make a new variable called three. It's like, wait a minute, you can't assign, uh, you, you can't use that variable name basically. So remember that assignment always works by taking whatever we have on the right hand side, whether it's a formula or just a simple number or word, and we change what's on the left hand side to equal what's on the right hand side. So what we've done here is we've created a variable called number, given it a value of three, and it knows its number is now an integer data type because, why? Because we didn't put quotes around the number three. But down here, we've said number now equals whatever it equaled before. However, we're going to convert that using this string function. We're going to convert it to a string now. So basically, that second line is the same thing as saying number equals three. All right, so I'm going to delete that though, and let's uh, let's try casting a few other things here real quick. Let's run this just so you can see that it works just fine. It didn't print anything out. We didn't have a print command, but casting only works in certain directions. So, for example, let's say we try to uh, let's change. Let's just I'm going to make something called variable. I'm going to say this equals. Um, what if I try to turn? Let's start with just the number three, just so you can see. Let's make sure this works. I'm going to print out print variable. Okay, print out three. Let's say I want to cast three to a string like we did above. String three. That works just fine. It prints out the exact same thing. It just treats it just treats this as text instead. But when you print out text, it doesn't include those those quotes you put around it when you do, when you initialize the variable. But let's try something else. What if we say, um, let's convert, let's make variable equals three, but then let's say variable equals, and let's, um, let's make this a string. And now let's convert it from a string back to an int using the int function. So we're saying variable equals what it equaled before, but convert it to an int. That's also going to work just fine because it, it can look at three and say, yeah, I, I get it. That's a number. Let's just take the quotes off it and make it an int. However, what if we try the word three? Error. It can't convert the word three into a number. It's text. And so you can't go from text to an integer unless that text is already natively an integer like that. All right, let's try some other ones here. Uh, let's do int, um, or let's make a variable, and let's give it the value of 3.7. So what just happened here? The variable was created as a float because it had a decimal, but then right here, we converted it to an int. Notice that by converting it, it does not round up. It simply eliminates all of the, uh, um, all, everything that's behind the decimal. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about rounding later on. Um, let's try another one. How about um, 
int uh, if we make this a string, is it still going to work? Nope. In this case, even though uh, even though it's natively a number, the addition of the decimal makes it impossible to convert it here to an integer. So let's try some other ones. How about let's convert let's turn that into a float. That time it does work because the native uh, the base type, if you remove the variables, is a float. I can go from this being a string to it now being a float. How about what if it's just three? This one also works because if a number doesn't have a decimal, it can still be a float. It just simply adds a 0, 0.0 to the end of it. All right, and then obviously, as you can guess, potato. That's not going to work. It's text. It can't convert that to anything. Um, and then if I were to also make it an integer, we haven't tried that one yet. Okay, before we simply had text around it. In this case, yeah, you can easily convert from integer type. All right, so. That's it for the, the base um, uh, topic of this chapter. What I want to do next is give you a few tasks and see if you can practice and use what you've learned to complete these tasks. Uh, I'll put these practices here in chapter summary. When you're done with that, you have a very simple checkpoint here to work on. So you're going to follow these instructions and you're going to submit your IPI notebook right here and tell me what you thought about the assignment. So what file is it you're selecting right here? What I want you to do is simply locate and drive. And the file that you create, not this one, but the one that you make for your checkpoint, you're going to upload that file right here on My Educator. Check this and then submit and you're done. All right, so I'm not going to make a video to walk you through how to do the, uh, the practices here in Chapter 2.5. That's for you to try on your own. And uh, I'll include some answer files, though, for you. Good luck.